45 years ago this week, the last astronauts to travel to the moon returned home. Here are five enduring things about Apollo 17. Number one, it was the first Apollo crew to include a scientist. Incredibly, Apollo 17, the final mission of the Apollo project, was the first NASA mission to include a trained scientist on the flight crew. Lunar Module Pilot Harrison Schmidt was the first member of Astronaut Group 4 to fly in space. Astronauts from earlier groups were required to hold degrees in science or engineering, but were selected primarily based on their experience as pilots. Group 4 was made up entirely of scientists, and of that group, which included six people in total, only Schmidt actually made it to the moon. But he made his participation in Apollo 17 count. In fact, number two, it was the most scientifically intensive Apollo mission. Schmidt, a geologist by trade, and mission commander Gene Cernan spent their time on the lunar surface carrying out a series of scientific experiments and studies, including some that were only ever conducted on Apollo 17. They were the only astronauts to take gravimetric readings of the area surrounding their landing site in the taurus Litro Valley. They also conducted the only study of the electrical properties of lunar soil and collected more samples of moon rocks and soil than any other Apollo mission, more than 110 kilograms, that's over 243 pounds. The science wasn't limited to activities on the lunar surface. While Cernan and Schmidt were down below, Command Module Pilot Ronald Evans had his own scientific responsibilities, including a lunar sounder experiment designed to reveal more about the internal structure of the moon, a radiometric study intended to create a temperature map of the lunar surface, and multiple experiments designed to measure the effects of cosmic rays. Apollo 17 also featured one of the rarest feats in all of human spaceflight. Number three, it included one of the only deep space EVAs. The most famous EVAs, extravehicular activities, performed during the Apollo missions were, of course, the excursions to the lunar surface. Cernan and Schmidt performed three separate moonwalks during the mission, but the most extraordinary EVA of Apollo 17 may have been the one that took place a few days later on the way back to Earth. Command Module Pilot Evans performed a deep space EVA, leaving the command module in order to retrieve film from cameras mounted on the exterior of the spacecraft. This was only the third such excursion ever, the other two having taken place on the preceding two Apollo missions. Leaving a spacecraft to work outside is impressive enough in low Earth orbit or on the surface of the moon, but imagine doing it while your spacecraft is halfway between the Earth and the moon, traveling at an average speed of 5,500 kilometers or 3,400 miles per hour. That's a hell of a thing. But even with that amazing EVA and the series of scientific experiments conducted by the Apollo 17 astronauts, there are two things that I feel render Apollo 17 truly worth remembering on its anniversary and always. Number four, it was the longest of the human missions to the moon. From launch to splashdown, Apollo 17 lasted 12 and a half days. It proved that humans could survive and function for extended periods, not just in space, but beyond Earth orbit and on the surfaces of other worlds. Six of those 12 days were spent in orbit around the moon, and for three of those six days at the moon, Cernan and Schmidt were living and working on the lunar surface. Apollo 17 was the third mission to include a lunar rover, and Cernan and Schmidt used it to explore more of the lunar surface than anyone else before or obviously since. They traveled a total distance of 36 kilometers or about 20 miles across the lunar surface, driving a maximum distance of over seven and a half kilometers or nearly five miles from the lunar module. Perhaps more than any previous mission, Apollo 17 demonstrated that human spaceflight was not a stunt, but something that could become a normal and incredibly important part of our life as a species. Which is why this last bit is so frustratingly sad. Number five, 
It was the last time humans truly left Earth. The astronauts of Apollo 17, Gene Cernan, Harrison Schmidt, and Ronald Evans were the last humans to travel beyond low Earth orbit. Every voyage into space taken since then has remained relatively close to home. It's been 45 years since people reached out into deep space. And keep in mind that it's a very human conceit to even refer to the moon as deep space, given how vast we know space to be and how little of even our own solar system we have actually explored. At the conclusion of the third and final moonwalk, there was a brief period after Schmidt had re-entered the lunar module when Commander Cernan was alone outside. It was then that he spoke what are, to date, the final words uttered by a human being standing on the surface of the moon. As we leave the moon at Taurus Littro, we leave as we came, and God willing, as we shall return, with peace and hope for all mankind. Godspeed the crew of Apollo 17. Perhaps the most enduring legacy passed down to us from Apollo 17 is something that many of us don't even think to associate with that mission. I'm talking about this picture, nicknamed the Blue Marble, one of the most iconic images of the 20th century, or any century. It was taken by the crew of Apollo 17 about two hours after leaving Earth orbit, as they were just beginning their journey to the moon. You can clearly see Antarctica at the bottom there, and above it, the continent of Africa, where the human species originated. Above that, the Arabian Peninsula, Palestine, Mesopotamia, Asia Minor, regions where some of our oldest and most influential religious myths and sacred traditions originated. We often look at this image and view it as a generic representation of Earth, but if you look in the upper right portion of the planet, you'll notice a large white vortex in the northern part of the Indian Ocean. That is the Tamil Nadu cyclone. It struck the southern tip of India, killing 80 people two days before this photograph was taken. This isn't just an image of Earth. This is a record of a specific point in time. This is our planet as it was on the 7th of December, 1972, at 10.39 a.m. UTC, seen from a distance of 29,000 kilometers, or about 18,000 miles. And it was seen not just by a camera lens, but by human eyes. It's been 45 years since human eyes were able to look at Earth in this way. And who knows how much longer it will be before one of us is able to view our planet like this again. If we wish to follow in the footsteps of the astronauts of Apollo 17, it will have to be soon. But then again, if we had been following their example all this time, we never would have remained Earth-bound for this long. The hardest part is picking only five. Catch you next time. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to www.patreon.com slash Steve Shives to become a patron. Thanks for watching.